Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Lineup Lab. Today we're going to be talking about ownership percentages. So, last year FanDuel used to tell you what the percent owned your player was in a Thursday contest. If you played like in the Thursday Bomb or the Thursday Rush, your player, you wouldn't be able to see other people's lineups, but you would be able to see how much that player was owned by the field in that tournament. Um, now they've actually gotten rid of that. And so we don't have a great measure of predicting who's going to be highly owned on FanDuel on Sundays and who's not or DraftKings or whatever. But there's actually a site called Fantasy Aces that does show ownership percentages of the Thursday contest. And I think this is a great way, and a lot of pros use this as a way of kind of gauging ownership and gauging which players will be popular and which players won't. Now, it's not perfect, let me repeat that, because I think Fantasy Aces is a, a site that uses two quarterbacks. So the quarterback ownerships are going to be a little weird. Um, and also the pricing can be different. Luckily, if you go to this Reddit thread that um, has Fantasy Aces ownerships, it is it compares them to the FanDuel salary. So it helps you gauge, okay, is this player being used a lot because his salary is good or because he's going to be a popular play? Um, and so you can get a pretty good idea overall. So long story short, you can get a pretty good idea. So I like looking at this every week um, and just and just thinking about, okay, what players are going to be under-owned that I might want to use more because they're being so overlooked? And what players are going to be so over-owned that I might want to fade them? And so when I'm looking for a fade for a player, I'm I'm kind of looking for a couple of key things. The first thing is, is I want a player who can have a bad game, who's very capable of having a bad game. And you're usually going to find these players on the lower end of the value plays. And that's because, you know, let's say a player is 4,000 on DraftKings or something, or Stoneman, like 3,000 on DraftKings. And, but he's like the number two wide receiver on the team. He could easily get 10 to 15 points. Then everyone's going to be on that player. But that player has actually a pretty good chance of having a five, six, seven point game. This is as opposed to someone who's a really, really high priced wide receiver like AJ Green in, in a prime matchup, for example. You could choose to fade him, but he probably isn't going to have a really bad game that's going to just kill the potential of your lineup. His bad game is going to be like 15 fantasy points. So the first thing is I want to look for a guy who has a really high risk of basically. And those are usually going to be the low salary guys. The other thing I'm looking for is, are there players around this player's salary that I actually think are better than this player is being highly owned? If you have both of those combined, I think they're a really good fade candidate. And there's one player this week that it seems like this is the case, and that's Cameron Meredith for the Chicago Bears. Now, Meredith has been a target monster the last couple weeks for the Bears. Um, if we look at NFL Savant, my one of my favorite sites, you go to the Bears and you look at um, his targets for week five, he had 13 targets in week five uh, against Indy. And then week four, he also had a ton of targets. Uh, or five, he only had five, but it was quite a few for how little he played. This guy's been a real target monster. That being said, there are a lot of mouths to feed on this offense. You have Alshon Jeffrey still. You have Zach Miller still. You have Eddie Royal. He's not practicing, but should play. You have Jordan Howard who catches passes out of the backfield. I'm just not sure I can count on Meredith with that many mouths to feed to have that great of a game. And if he doesn't score a touchdown, which is extremely possible, he basically has just completely killed your lineup because I don't think he's going to get the catches that we need in order to be able to use him that much or if we're, be able to make up for the fact that he didn't score a touchdown. So I think he's kind of a guy who's being really over-owned here. And so that's one thing. I do ha think he has a high risk of ruin. But another thing is, is if we look on just DraftKings in general, you know, looking at these salaries, um, Meredith's 4,100. I see a bunch of guys that I, I think I like better than him. Tavon Austin the target monster with a great matchup for the Lions. Robert Woods in San Francisco, which is basically the best matchup for wide receivers in football. We have Michael Thomas even against Carolina. Golden Tate, we have Theo Riddick out. 
that's gonna, that's really great for Tate, who's going to pick up a lot of targets. I think there's a lot of guys in this area that are just better plays than Meredith. So I don't really understand this ownership percentage at all. And I think that Meredith is certainly a great fade candidate because of that. Now, if you really want to take a fade to another level, you might actually want to fade the entire Chicago offense and really leverage that Meredith fade. Because if you look at the correlation matrix that you can find at 444.com or correlations on the internet, you would see that players on the same team are actually correlated with each other. Like Alshon Jeffrey, and it, this doesn't make total sense, but it has to do with the fact that offense is kind of move together. You want the offense as a whole to be successful for your player to do well. And so if if Jordan Howard does well, it increases actually increases the chance that Cameron Meredith does well. If Alshon Jeffrey does well, it actually increases the chances that Cameron Meredith does well. So you can actually add in an entire fade of the Chicago offense to really leverage this. But I think also I, I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but I'm highly considering fading Meredith this week. And I think it's probably a smart idea. So on the flip side of this, we're going to look at players who look under owned that I was a little surprised about and and maybe plays that we should own a little more because how little people are looking at them. And I came up with three and they're all stacks. So the first one I want to look at is uh, the a giant stack of Eli Manning, who actually only got 1% ownership in um, GPPs on Fantasy Aces. And I think his price is a little high, so it might have depressed it a little bit. But still, I, I'm surprised at this, and I bet he has low ownership. And then Odell Beckham Jr., who isn't even listed on this, but which indicates maybe he got less than 1% ownership. I don't even know. I think this is a really a stack that people, I'm surprised, just isn't getting that much ownership. The Giants are at home against Baltimore. Um, and if we look at our sportsbook projection tool, we have New York in terms of pass share. Actually, they're on the first page. We have them actually seventh out of uh, every team on pass share with 15.69. That's quite a bit. The, it, this is definitely a good matchup from Vegas's perspective. If you actually look at Football Outsiders, that ranks uh, defenses against the pass and defenses against the rush. And this isn't perfect, obviously, because for fantasy purposes, this doesn't totally translate. But Baltimore has a stout run date. They're number one against the run this year, which is not surprising. They just have a really great front seven. They're 12th against the pass. So I, I don't think the Giants, being a favorite here, are going to try to run all over uh, Baltimore. They're going to pass a lot. And I think it's people's perception. They say, well, you know, Beckham's not going to do as well as last year. You know, we have Sterling Shepard on the team now. Victor Cruz is back. He's just not getting as much opportunity. I actually think that's not true. So if we look at NFL Savant and we go to the Giants, and let's just look at him for this year um, in terms of target share. Odell Beckham Jr., 28% of targets. So that's a that's a good amount. That's a, well, that just so you can see, uh, 28% of targets for Odell Beckham Jr. Okay, let's look at 2015, the year that he supposedly had more opportunity. If you actually look at it, it's actually at 26% target share. So he's actually getting targeted more this year. Um, and then if we look at red zone targets, I haven't even looked at this, by the way, so we'll see. He got about 25% red zone targets in 2015. Again, solid number, not that much. This year, he's at 30. So the, for the people who are telling me, oh, well, their offense is totally different. He has no opportunity. You know, Sterling Shepard's there, Victor Cruz is there. He's actually getting more opportunity. So I think people are just sort of overrating the fact that he hasn't scored that many touchdowns this year and has been quote unquote underperforming. And I think they're just really overlooking the stack. So I actually like that stack quite a bit. And definitely if, if they're going to be low owned, I, I like it quite a bit in the tournament. Um, another one I like, and I'll just go through these a little quickly because I'm not as obsessed with these, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking a, a Blake Bortles uh, who's really low on quarterback can run the ball and have big fantasy games. With Allen Robinson, um, who looks like, let's try to find him here. Oh, here we go. Um, he got 7% ownerships in GPP, so not totally insanely under owned compared to Eli Manning, but still pretty under owned. Um, they are facing the Bears on the road. They're projected to score uh, 22 and a half points. The, the Jaguars actually just lost uh, Luke Jokel, who's a horrible, he's their left tackle, horrible, horrible pass blocker but actually a really good run blocker. And the running game is 
horrible anyway. Um, I think it's about to get a lot worse. So I see them not really having that much success running the ball and actually having good success passing the ball. I mean, Chicago's front seven is good. Their secondary is their weakness. I think people are overlooking this a little bit. And as we know, Allen Robinson is a target, target monster. If we look at Jacksonville for the season um, in terms of passing targets, Robinson's at 28%. So this is really elite territory. And um, he has 46 targets. That's only with four games. So if if he had a full uh, five games under his belt, he'd probably be close to leading the league in target share. So I like him quite a bit. And then the last one is um, a quarterback who isn't even on this list. And this is probably the biggest stretch of one. But Andy Dalton, who apparently got under 1% ownership, um, and A.J. Green. So one thing, if you watch my video, I, I don't even know where Green is here. So let's even see if he's, he's on this list. Uh, well, Green Bay Packers, no, 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 no. So he's not even on this list. So he's someone like Odell Beckham Jr. who just people aren't really looking at it. But if you watch my video a couple days ago when I was talking about those underperforming offenses um, according to yards per drive and points per drive, Cincinnati's actually been really underperforming. They've been getting unlucky in the points department. And so I think this offense is a little underrated this week. Right now, Vegas has them projected only scored 19 points against New England. I'm guessing that number goes up. And this offense really just doesn't have that many places to go. You know, they have A.J. Green, 28% target share. He's obviously a huge beast, um, a great red zone beast. And then they basically have Brandon LaFell and then a running back, Giovanni Bernardo, the past two. C.J. Uzoma gets a little bit of work. I, I think that uh, this offense is underrated here. And this is a, a stretch, obviously, because they're only projected to score 19 points. But especially in draft games with PPR, um, where Green is going to thrive, I think he's a, I think he's definitely an interesting play. He's so high-priced that I just don't think people are going to look at him. But, you know, I think Dalton Dalton's cheap price makes up for a little bit. And I think this is a stack that um, at the end of Sunday could actually be a, a big performance. So those are my under on stacks and and my over on fade with Cameron Meredith. I think I think you should probably go to this Reddit page. I'll put a link at the bottom. And it's a really great place to just look at some ownership and see, does this make sense? Does this not? It's also a great place to just double check your sanity, basically. Because maybe you're overlooking someone. You might see like, huh, Will Fuller, that's interesting. Why is he up here? And that makes you double check, okay, Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe I'm overlooking something with Houston's offense. And you can see, okay, you can really get a full grasp on who are people on and does it make sense. And let's make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. So as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the up and click the subscribe button. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, guys. Really, really exciting stuff. So look for my videos later this week. I, this is probably actually my last one this week. Maybe I'll try to squeeze in one more. But um, good luck with your lineups on Sunday. And yeah, hopefully one of us wins a million. Hopefully it's me. Yeah.